What's up keto people? Uh, today I'm gonna be going through like a beginner's guide to starting keto. I know most of you already know all this kind of stuff, so you might as well just move on to the next video. Um, but for those of you who still don't really know exactly what to do and how to start and rules and all of that, um, stay tuned. Um, I will say that this is what I did. Um, this is how I did it. I'm not a nutrition doctor, you know, all that legal stuff. Um, this is how I lost it. Um, so anytime I say this is what you need to do, it's the way I did it. Not, this is absolutely something you need to do, period. You know, if you get that. Um, okay, so the first thing is first, um, which is um, your weight loss will be pretty substantial the first week. It might only be four pounds, six, eight, 10, 12. It will eventually start to slow. The beginning of it is gonna be your water weight and then is when you're actually gonna start losing fat after that. So when it starts to slow, you should really be happy because that's when it, your body is gonna start functioning and it, it, it's gonna start doing what it needs to start doing. So that's when you should be happy, not when you should be like, oh, I didn't lose an insane amount of weight the second week. Um, also, one thing I regretted and most people do regret is not measuring yourself at the very beginning. So do that, do it now, do it today after this video, measure yourself. I don't even care if you don't have one of those fabric measuring things. Go grab your tape measure from your toolbox <laughs> and do it. That's what I did for a while. Um, do that or like I was saying to a lot of you, get a ribbon, piece of ribbon or string and cut it to size to your waist and everything and slap that up on your closet wall and then a few weeks later or a month later or whatever, go back and do it again because your weight will eventually stall and uh, you will be discouraged and going, why is it not working? It is working. You just continue on with that, with that string and it'll, you'll see. Um, the other thing um, about your first week is you, you know, keto flu. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's headaches, it's fatigue, um, it's lack of elect electrolytes. And I'll go into electrolytes. Um, but main thing, miracle cure is pickle juice. Drink it as if your life depended on it. If for some reason you don't like pickle juice, drink olive juice. Um, I've also heard, I haven't tested, putting pink salt underneath your tongue and that should help try that. Um, but that, that should help you, should help you out with the keto flu, but we'll get into lack of electrolytes later. Um, sorry, I have notes here. Um, the, the one thing you wanna focus on is 20 net carbs or less, um, 30 total. Now I know many people might say 50 carbs are okay, and yeah, it is, but I will say that gets into temptation territory. And if you really wanna truly get focused and do it, you really should do the 20 net carbs. I'm just saying. Um, you don't wanna really eat sweets also or um, your re dessert replacements for the first week. If for some reason you're like, I can't do it, I have to have something, really don't go into those craving, really don't. But you know, if, if you're like, I'm gonna go and eat a chocolate cake, if I don't, then you know, by all means do it. But I recommend you don't doing that. Your, bo your body is gonna be craving sweets and carbs the first few days. It's kind of like, you know, well, here we, here's another um, drug uh, storyline. You know, it's like a drug. Your, your body's gonna go through withdrawals and it's gonna be like, I need this, I want this, give it to me. And you're just gonna have to ignore it. Um, drink some water, drink a whole lot of water. Um, anytime you get those cravings and just don't even think about it just if you're if you're like mm, okay should I just go and get like no 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 just like put a stop sign as soon as your your mind starts thinking about it just put a stop sign right in front of your face and just be like no I can't do it um let's see don't pay too much attention to the calories at the beginning at, um you know your first week or so just focus on those 20 net carbs the following week though, the calories will eventually start to catch up with you. You can't be having keto Alfredo sauce for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, and you know cheese loaded sausage like I have every now and then. Um, you can't be having those big calorie filled um, days uh, after the, the first week. So you need to focus on that. Um, you need to also around the second, 
to third week, start focusing on your macros and what they are. You can go to Keto Connects Macro Calculator, Google that, or Keto Gains, I've heard is better. Um, whichever one, and just go to, instead of, you know, weight gain or maintaining, make sure to click on um, weight loss, you know, on whether it's like one to two pounds a week that you wanna lose or whatever, and, and it'll um, factor in that stuff. Um, Keto Connect has a great video tutorial on, on whenever you Google that on how to use their macro calculator, and that'll tell you kind of how to use it for any of them. Um, so then a generally, okay, so for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, once again, I do intermittent fasting, so I don't do breakfast. I don't drink coffee, thank goodness, because I would be addicted to it. Um, so, um, but for, so I just do lunch and dinner because, you know, anytime that you consume anything, your body's going to stop doing what it's doing and try to, and start breaking down the foods into fats, carbs, and, um, protein, you know, so anytime you eat, um, that's what's going to happen. Your body's going to stop what it's doing. Um, and so the more you eat, the less time it has to really focus on what, what you want it to do. So be mindful of that. Really not, really don't snack. Um, if you want to have your pepperoni chips as a snack or something, have that with your lunch. Um, but if you're at work and you can't and, and you know, you absolutely need to have it, go ahead and do it. Um, but it's one of those, you know, necessity things. It's probably better to do it if you absolutely need to rather than you want to. Okay, so generally for breakfast, you can have sausage, eggs, bacon, omelet, bulletproof coffee. Um, do whatever. If you want to have your dinner from the night before for, for breakfast, go ahead and do that. All we're focusing on are the carbs and the calories and, and the fat and all of that. It doesn't really matter. You can have whatever you want. We're not limited. Lunch it can be um, a cheeseburger patty with a spinach salad or my um, lettuce switch with two deviled eggs. Um, it, it's endless, especially for, for dinner. You can have pork chops and cauliflower mac and cheese um, or my cheese filled sausage and, and deviled eggs or a side salad or um, Brussels sprouts and, and a steak. Brussels sprouts are kind of higher in carbs, but who cares? They're vegetables, okay? You still, you still count them though. Um, so that's kind of what you can do for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, the one main thing, if anything, you need to ask yourself, are you going to be dirty keto or strict keto? You need to figure this out. If you are not going to really care about um, what the ingredients are, you're just going to stay 20, 20 net carbs or less and that's it, then you're going to be dirty keto. Um, I will say people are successful with both. I was dirty keto for three or four months and that's whenever I was, you know, I, I was doing amazing on it. Um, and then it was kind of catching up to me, I think, or maybe I just got closer to my goal weight, which I'm definitely close to my goal weight now. So I just had to switch over to, to strict for my own personal reasons. I just feel all in all even better about myself knowing that I'm stricter. I'm not fully strict. I'm still learning stuff. I still make mistakes, but you need to decide on whether you're going to do dirty or strict. Um, strict will is just overall better for you. Um, it, it's going to work. Um, they both work, but uh, overall health wise, the more strict you go, obviously the better off you'll be. Um, like for instance, here, here is going to be a chart of all the no notes of all, all this in the red for strict keto, you want to avoid. You'll notice maltodextrin is up at the very top. That is the ingredient that's in those sugar-free jello boxes that you people are trying to eat. You need to stay away from those. Get the sugar-free in, in the cup. Um, doesn't have it on there, uh, in there. Um, maltodextrin is also the number one or two ingredients in those tacos or seasoning, or well, the ranch dressings for sure, like all those powdered dressings and uh, it's in like the taco seasoning and things. Um, so you generally want to avoid that. Um, same thing with the maltitol, you'll see this over here. I know you're gonna try and get away with Russell Stover's sugar-free chocolates and those great looking things and those Adkins chocolates and M&Ms and all that, but maltitol is in them. You'll notice this is in the bad category. Half of it is gonna be, is gonna be sugar and half of it is gonna be gastrointestinal issues. 
And does anyone know about sugar-free gummy bears? I'm sure you do. Look them up on Amazon reviews. Um, so maltitol is bad for you. And you want to just generally stay away from those Russell Stovers. It, if you're doing strict keto, which I think you should do, but if you need to be dirty, be dirty. Be dirty. Um, and then here is what the good sugars are. Um, and when I say good, I'm going to say okay and great for strict keto. The only one strict keto people will all say is good is erythritol. Anything else in here, I don't want to say anything else or everything else, but like sucralose, most strict people just won't have that. It doesn't really affect me. So I'm okay with sucralose because some of these things they'll say, um, they're just all chemically and bad and you shouldn't have them. Like, you know, there's the whole big deal of aspartame for, you know, diet sodas and things and how it's just, it's bad for you. It'll probably cause cancer and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm like, okay. So, um, for me personally, it doesn't bother me that much, but, um, it might bother some people. So, um, it's up to you on those particular ones, but as a general rule, these right here or were, um, good ones um, to have, especially erythritol. You can have that. That's number one good thing. Um, okay. So, um, also when it comes to the desserts and things, um, there's, if you're going dirty, this is not for strict, but if you're, if you absolutely need to have a dessert and you're in like the first week or two and you absolutely are about to go to the donut shop and get an eclair or something, if you just know you're going to end up doing that, um, you'll want to get something like this. This is, I haven't, I've had this in my fridge for so long. Um, they're smart cakes. Um, they're really good and, um, they're nine grams and the dietary fiber is five and then the erythritol is four. So, um, you're looking at zero, zero nut carbs. Um, but there's, you know, oat fiber, corn fiber, whey protein, you know, which is not exactly the best because you don't really want to do the oat fiber and corn fiber and that sort of stuff for strict keto. But, you know, if you're going dirty keto, I'd say pick up some of these from Smart Baking Company. The cinnamon, the coconut, and the um, tangerine are good, but I heard the chocolate's kind of bad, so I didn't order it. Um, but I've had those in my fridge for months now. I haven't even touched them. Hi, Luz. Hi, baby. Um, so there's that. Um, oh, also with the breakfast, you can do pancakes. Look up pancakes. There's tons of them out there, keto pancakes, and 40% of them are good. <laughs> and, um, and I use this chalk zero I got from, from Amazon. I don't know. There's probably something that's bad in here. Um, like the vegetable fiber, but I don't care. I have like a small dab. I don't like load up the stuff. So I'm, um, this does, it's monk fruit, um, sweetener. So that's good. That's the only syrup that I'll even touch. Um, so there's that, um, electrolytes. I'm not going to go too much into those. You already know if you're doing lack of electrolytes, so this is, these are what you need to have. You need to have potassium, sodium, magnesium for potassium, do avocados, do the no salt brand salt, salt that along, salt your food with that, along with the pink Himalayan salt, 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 salt. If anything is wrong, salt, um, magnesium. Um, I said in the last video, uh, magnesium glyconate, um, is what you would need. Now really any magnesium is good, but some magnesium will have laxative effects. Like if you're getting that natural calm powder, um, it's promoting laxative effects. So you would only want to do like a half a teaspoon, um, at night or in the morning or something. Um, be careful. Cause I attempted that for a little while and loose bowels. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and buy magnesium glyconate in pill form. Um, then also sodium, obviously salt, salt, the snot out of everything. Um, then the last thing that I'm going to talk about is urine strips. Okay. So once again, um, there was someone that was saying they're very reliable. No, I mean, they are for the first week or two. Um, they're basically like, they're, they're telling you yes or no, that you have ketones in your body, your excess ketones. 
okay? Um, after a few weeks, you know, so you're gonna start seeing, you know, all the difference in all the different colors the first few weeks. If you see the dark purple, you're dehydrated, you're probably not in super ketosis. So don't even have that as a goal. Um, but I mean, what this really is, is it measures your excess ketones, okay? So after a few weeks or a month or so, when your body is really getting into ketosis and it's really knowing how it's functioning, your body, is, it's gonna be producing the ketones and it's, it might just show trace amounts, like that little neutral color at the very bottom, trace amounts. And you're like, oh, what the heck? I should be at least in the middle. What did I eat? What did this? No, what, it's, what it is is your body is starting to use a whole lot more of them and know how to use the ketones. So your body is not gonna be flushing them out as much. You know, at the, at the beginning, your body's gonna flush out excess ketones because it doesn't really know what it's gonna be doing with them, you know? So it's gonna be jostling them around for a few weeks. But when your body starts to realize, oh, okay, I got the, I got the flow, I know what's going on, it's gonna be using a whole lot of them in there and it's not gonna be, you're not, your system's not gonna be flushing them out. Um, so it's just gonna show trace amounts when your body is actually functioning the way it should. So only trust those as far as you can throw them in the gar garbage after two or three weeks. That's just my opinion though. <laughs> okay, well that's all of my beginning beginner's tips. I um, hope I said something to help you out. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the little bell button if you want no notifications on whenever I get, um, whenever I put up new videos. So I will see you next time.